Matt, uh, I'm sure you never tire of talking about Wembley three years ago. We're coming up to the anniversary again. I mean, do you still think about that penalty? Yeah, it's on constant loop <laughs> on YouTube just to get hits. <laughs> okay, uh, no, on, on a serious note, my daughter always plays it. Does she? All the time. Yeah, all the time. She just can't get enough of it. She still thinks I'm going to miss. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it was a great day, wasn't it? So it's, it does live long in the memory. You, you get, I get tweets all the time about it still. You know, things will pop up here, there and everywhere. But it is it was in the past, though. It is, yeah. But it, it was a season that really Rovers have built on. And it was important that we got out of the conference at the first attempt. And it, was, it, it was very important in terms of the history of this club. Oh, I think it's yeah. I think you know, with it becomes a defining moment, um, and it also. I think sometimes though that that gets put to the forefront. But you also got to remember there was four other lads that took penalties, and, and Ellis scored, and the referee who helped us out. <laughs> so, uh, in terms of that, as I, I've, I've always said, it's not just about that one. It was about the, the four that stepped up. I mean, we could say Chris had the pressure one to start off with to put us on a good roll. Then Matty finished off. Then Brownie shanked his in. And then Ange, I think, but Ange, had, said Ange, was, yeah, Ange is, was the biggest pressure one, and I really had a shot to nothing. So, I mean, it was, just, it, was a, it was a child, it's a childhood moment, really, mm. the, the shot to win the game at Wembley in a cup final. And, you know, for all them years and years and years when you were a kid growing up, you always did it whenever you were in the back garden. And, for, I was, you know, I was just very fortunate to, to live that experience out. But you had your family there watching as well. It must have made it a very special day for you. Yeah, um, obviously the wife was there. We just had Cooper, who was six months old. He was there. It was a warm day as well. Um, yeah, all, all the family had come down, got a bus from Gloucester, uh, as did the rest of the lads as well. So I think as I as I uh, as I was jogging up, my mum ran off into the boxes. She didn't <laughs> want to see, and um, made an excuse that the baby needed changing, but he didn't. Uh, and the wife and the kids stood there with hands on their eyes, and then just yeah, as I said. They, they soon celebrated afterwards. <laughs> it's, uh, it, it was followed up by another promotion a year later. So you, you had back-to-back -back promotions. Did you ever expect that when you, you joined the club? What, I mean, what were your aims when you came to Rome? Well, the aims when the aim when I came was, as I said before, that uh, the, the gaffer wasn't happy with his changing room. He wanted that sorted. Um, he needed a bit of experience. I provided that in the middle of the park for him, um, and he needed that kind of leadership. He had it in in obviously. Macca and, uh, and Mildy, who were obviously proven, who were already here, uh, and I was just that added extra cog, I think, and I think that was the cog that was needed just to start the ball rolling. Um, it, as I said before, you do sometimes have to take that step back to go two steps forward, and I think in this case is what we have done. Now, you know, we look back on it and think, yeah, it's a fantastic achievement, especially the second one, to you know, to, to surprise people and to do it on the last day, and, and the way that it happened was. It's obvious it's stuff of legend now. Um, you know, Brownie popping up and, and hitting it off his right heel. Um, <laughs> but it was it was just it was a magnificent day, a magnificent day. And you know, we, and we, I think as a group of players, I think we deserved it because we had a lot of pressure in the first season, like a lot of pressure. Um, you know, when the managers touched on it before, there was Clark out banners out when in the training ground when you know we first started kicking off, and um, you know, Ultranham. When we fans on the coach, when we it? lost there, we had fans on the coach. <coughs> Obviously, voicing their displeasure at the result, and you know we lost two one. Um, and the same again, we had it. Uh, where was it? It was on a Tuesday night somewhere. Oh, near Mansfield. There, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. It was a, <laughs> that's how bad it was. We've forgotten about it now. <laughs> no, no, yeah. Um, but yeah, but that's. I mean, we had we had the same sort of uh, scenario then, and you know to but to have that mental strength as it was to carry that on and and carry the club basically on our backs to keep it going and to keep pushing forward and to keep trying to chase down because obviously we had a poor start and to chase down Barnet like we did and at one stage overtake him and then obviously you know we, we let it go at Dover um, but you know and, and to show the resilience to go and then go through the playoffs and obviously what we did in the final we didn't play great I mean, the manager were talking the other day about it funnily enough and so we were horrendous that day probably the worst we played for a really long time um, but that was just that was just us to a T. We could grind it out. Mm. We ground everything out. When, when we could play, and when we had the opportunity to play, I don't think there was a better team in the division at that time. You know, we had strength all over the pitch. We had um, obviously so we were scoring goals for fun as well. Ellis then chipped in. Matty was scoring goals, and 
you know, we'd be getting, I think I got eight that year as well. It was personally, it was probably my second. Prolific. most Yeah, I yeah, know, <laughs> from a defensive midfield role. But that's what we were. We were very attacking, and but we also, at the stage of when we needed to grind out, we could do it. And I think that was important. And that confidence then transcended into the next year. And that's when we did I think that's, it was the same again. We hit Christmas time and just flew off like a rocket again. And... Um, you know, as I said, the nucleus of the team was there. Obviously, we had, we were scoring goals still. Um, the clean sheet record, I think, we broke that year in League Two, which was, I think, it was a catalyst for us to to make that promotion push. You you had promotions before you joined Rovers, but do you look back at those those two years in particular with a lot of pride? <clears throat> oh, massively! They're the best moments of my career, without a shadow of a doubt. Without a shadow. And I was fortunate enough to to win at Wembley before, but the way that we did it, obviously, given the circumstances, the size of the crowd. You know, it was the it was a, it was just a huge relief. It was just it's like the the kettle boiling isn't it? when you take it off the thing mm. and everything just simmers down. That's what it felt like afterwards. We'd been bubbling up to that point, and then once we finally did it, we could then relax. Um, and then to get the next one after the top after the back of that was you know it was surreal. I, I had a funny feeling because obviously I signed a two-year deal and I thought right if we don't do it in the first year, we'll definitely 100% do it in the second year. That's what we did at Torquay. Um, but to do one and then one again was, and then the season after that finished top ten in League One. You know, it was a, it was a really successful three year period for the club. How much do you miss playing? I, at the start, I didn't. Uh, midway through, I saw a couple of obviously I come to watch games and stuff, and it's been really difficult because obviously I'm still really friendly with, friendly with the boys down there, and you know they went for a really tough period in October November time, I think it was. And I just, I just, I just thought, right, I can help out here, whichever way. But you know, I, I, I come to the stage at the end where I thought to myself, can I do another year? Obviously, here there was, there was nowhere else I, I really wanted to go. I didn't want to go and bounce around the country, and you know, I got my family are now settled, and obviously the, the offer had been made um, to go into coaching, and I did toy with, with maybe pursuing the career a little bit more. But then I realised at 35, these boys are now getting fitter, stronger. They're, they're everything I was when I was 22. <laughs> so, but then I'm playing. I'm, I've got 15 years on on some of them. You know, they're running around like whippets, mm. and you've got me old fogey right in the middle of the park. <laughs> um, and I just thought th- th- that was enough. You know, I, I don't think people realise how much you put your family through the ringer as well, uh, because it's not only myself. It was obviously the wife, the kids, family alongside it, your friends and stuff. There's a lot of stuff you have to give up with it. And you know, for, for me now, it's it's a chance to to go up to a, you know learn something different. It's for my family to be based in the same place. It's for my kids there um, to obviously progress in their schooling. My middle daughter's half decent at gymnastics, so we're going to push her as much as we can. So she's going to need a lot of time, as with the rest of the kids. Um, so that that was a big decision and a big factor in it. But you know, I was I was playing with painkillers for the best part of four or five years, and. You know the gut rot was kicking in as well, so <laughs> and it was just I was waking up on a Sunday morning, and you know it would take me half a day to after a game, especially to to walk properly. And I just thought, you know what, enough's enough, enough is enough. I mean, I trained, I trained with the boys. I was fortunate enough actually the first time this year to join in on Tuesday, and I done all right to start off with, and then I just hit the brick wall, <laughs> hit the brick wall. Um, but it was good. It was it was nice. Uh, it was nice to join in and have that competitive night. I do miss that. Yeah. And I've said before, I, I miss I miss. I miss I miss the atmosphere. That's the that's the main thing. When you stood out there in the middle of the pitch and you're, you know, the songs are going and people are singing your own, There's no better there's no better feeling in football than that, especially if you're winning as well. But you know those aspects I know I'll miss. Um, as I said on the Sunday morning, I 100% don't miss that. I love waking up fresh. So um, you're yeah. throwing yourself into your new role though with the under 18s, and and it seems to me that you and Tom have got a really good working relationship, and you're very enthusiastic about the group of players you have. Yeah, I mean, I, d- I don't think we could have envisioned the way it's gone for us this year. Obviously, we're two different characters merged together, um, and it, I think I think things have transgress- transgressed brilliantly. Um, we both have the the same philosophy, where we want to tie along with what the manager's doing, and also the way we're educating the boys as well, um, because it's not just on the pitch; it's off the pitch. It's important. It's the way to conduct themselves off it, and it's doing the right things to represent Bristol Rovers, and that's. And that's fundamentally that's what the manager wants. So that's what we've then got to obviously try and instill in not just the 18s but the 16s that are coming through and, and the 15s. I mean, we'd be fortunate enough to play 15s this year. You know, we've had a few 
four or five boys that have been very good when they've come up with the 18. So when you look in terms of that and the rest of them that have obviously haven't involved, the, the future is very bright in the academy. Uh, and it's just for obviously for me and Tom now is to try and get these boys up to a level where, you know, they can un if we can get them to a level where they're at Cri Will Chris for, for six months and then they're in pushing into the first team squad, then that means we've done our jobs properly. And that's the way me personally and, and, and Tom, we're looking at trying to, to keep that going. I mean, we've got three boys now who've got a good chance and hopefully they progress. Um, you know, and we've, we've also got a really good nucleus coming behind. So it's important that we keep them up to speed. You, you've spoken throughout the season about there, there needs to be a pathway through to the first team. I think you've actually created that or, or yeah. certainly made it better. Well, I got a sledgehammer <laughs> and then where it was blocked, I knocked it off. <laughs> That's what I had to do. <laughs> but um, to see the likes of, of Luke Russ, for example, going through... Russ is a fantastic example. So he was with the 18s last mm -hmm. year, as was Cam Hargreaves. You know, he obviously, he got let go by Exton and we'd taken him on. Um, and, you know, they, they show the right characteristics that the manager wants, first and foremost. It doesn't necessarily have to be about talent. If you do all the fundamentals that he wants, he's going to put you in or he's going to involve you around it. Um, and that's obviously that's another big thing what we're trying to instill. We're saying to them, look, as talented what you are, because you wouldn't be here if you weren't. You know, you've got to have these little bits. Because if you don't, then we might as well show you the door now. Mm. So it's up to them at the end of the day. I keep saying to it, we'll give them the tools. We'll give them everything that we can for them to go and try and progress to become professional footballers. But in, ultimately, it's up to them. Now, if they want to go and do it, they can do it. The same as what Luke did. Luke used to be in the first one in. He used to phone roll every morning. He was a, he was a professional without being a professional, and that's there's no thing why he's not he's made his debut now. He's regularly involved in squads, mm. the same as we can, and that's that's testament to him and how he is as a lad. Because I always say the first contract to get is the easiest one, it's to get the next one, the next one, and then it becomes harder. And the older you get, the harder it gets. Trust me. <laughs> but th but that's football. That is football. You know, it's really difficult to get your next contract. That's what we're trying to tell these boys now that the ones that have gone up, you've got your first one now. Now your aim is to try and get the second one. Now you've got to get your own personal targets. You've got to go and hit the first team. So by the end of your first season with the 23s, you need to be in around that squad. Mm. You need to be pushing it. You need to be giving the manager serious questions. Because at 19, as he said, he's put Rusty in, put Rusty in at MK Dons, and he was brilliant there. So there's no reason to say that these boys who are coming up can't do that. Fascinating to talk to you, mate. Thank you. It's always brilliant to talk to you, Keith. I love you. <laughs> and thanks for having me here. <laughs>